to celebrate this Sunday Eucharist with you. As Father Justin mentioned, I am the leader of the congregation. I am living in Rome. I came here to the States on Saturday, November 30th, to visit the SPDs working in this country, also to visit the people, the congregation, the parishioners like you here in this parish. The day before I left Rome, on Friday, 29 of November, we had a meeting with Pope Francis. We, the leaders of religious congregations, he spent around 90 minutes, one hour and a half, talking to us, the leaders of the congregation. And after that meeting, every one of us had the opportunity to introduce himself. So when I told him I am the Superior General of the Society of the Divine Word, he told me, please extend my greetings to your conferences, to your brothers. And I think also greetings to my brothers means also greetings to the people with whom they are working, for whom they are there. So also, therefore, first of all, I want to extend the greetings of Pope Francis to you here in this parish. It's very fresh because I just met him the end of November. <clears throat> Meeting Pope Francis is really a very inspiring moment, encouraging moment for us. And I believe also listening to him, to his speeches, to his homilies, is also very inspiring for all of us, also for you. Now to today's reading. When I read and contemplated on the readings today, I had the feeling that there is a tension between the first reading and the gospel. The first reading is about the vision, the dream of the prophet Isaiah. It starts with the words, on that day, it refers to a future when the dream will come through, when the vision will be a reality. And what is that vision? The vision is about peace. And that vision is expressed in beautiful language with powerful images. It is said that the wolf will be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with a kid. The calf and the young lion shall browse together with a child, with a little child to guide them. There shall be no harm or ruin on all, the holy, on all my holy mountain. Beautiful, powerful image to express that vision of peace of dignity of all human beings, not only of all human beings, but with all creation. With all creation. That is the vision on that day. When I was reading this first, the first reading, the vision, the dream of the prophet Isaiah, I was thinking of the dream of Dr. Martin Luther King. On that, day, on that day, all human beings will share the same dignity as people created by the Lord. That is a vision. That is a dream. Now we come to the gospel. In the gospel, it is said, the kingdom of God is at hand. It is now. And even now, the axe lays on the roots of the, of the tree, and every tree that does not bear fruit will be cut off. It is now. It is now. There is no time for dreaming. There is, now for, there is no time for, for vision. It is now. The urgency of time 
to do something, to act. You see the difference? The first reading talks about vision, dream. And the gospel is about the urgency to, to take action now. Now. But I think the two things are not two alternatives that exclude each other. No. These are two aspects of our life as Christians, as Catholics. Dream, vision, it's very important. But also, the action we should take now, here, it's also very important. We cannot take the one and neglect the other. Keeping the dream is very important, but that does not lead us to close our eyes to see what is needed now and here. At the same time, the urgency to take actions today, our concern of what is to do today, is not the reason to put aside the vision, the dream. Two are equally important. We Christians are witness of the vision of God that He has, has entrusted to us, but at the same time are witnesses of the urgency to take action today to address the issue we have to address today and here. And that dream, that vision, is a source of inspiration to take action today. The vision, the dream, is the source of inspiration to take action today. And I think that is what Advent is all about. Advent, the time that where we prepare ourselves to wait for the coming of the Lord, a future that coming of the Lord, promised to us in the future, asks of us to open ourselves today, now, to welcome Him, to prepare ourselves to welcome Him later, urges us to welcome people today already, to welcome Him today in the people whom we encounter. encounter. Welcoming people, that is what St. Paul in the second letter talks about. We need to welcome each other, St. Paul writes in his letter. We need to welcome each other. And welcoming each other means to make people feel at home, to make people feel part of the family, part of the group. Means we share the same dignity as human beings, as members of the group, as members of the church. That is welcoming each other. And that welcoming each other now is our preparation to welcome Jesus. Therefore, Advent is not just a passive waiting, but an active waiting Already now, we open ourselves to welcome others, to make them feel part of the family. And Pope Francis repeatedly says, the church should be a house where everybody feels welcomed. Is our parish, parish community, such a community that welcomes everybody? That is a question to every one of us. Our church, our parish can only be a welcoming community if every one of us is a welcoming person. The church is not an abstract thing. It's made of us, concrete persons, concrete Christians. 
dreaming and the urgency to take action today. Vision and the courage to do something today. That is also a virtue lived by St. Arnold Janssen, the founder of our congregation to which the four of us belong to, the Congregation of the Divine Word, St. Arnold Janssen. And today, exactly today, 130 years ago, St. Arnold Janssen founded a female congregation, the Missionary Sisters of the Holy Spirit. Eighth of December, 1889. And then, a few, a few years later, he founded another congregation, a female congregation, the Sisters of the Perpetual Adoration. With the three congregations, he wanted to express his conviction that for mission, concrete activities are equally important as prayers, as adoration, as meditation. Concrete actions and prayers are both equally needed for mission. Also for our Christian life, we need to pray, we need to meditate on the Word of God, but at the same time, we need to do, to take actions. Both are equally needed. We, the SPDs, are now working in 82 countries. We have a membership of 6,000. 6,000 members of the SPDs working in 82 countries. One of that countries is Uganda. You know, Uganda in Africa. In Uganda, presently there are four SPDs, four missionaries of the divine world, working for the refugees from South Sudan. You know, South Sudan is really a poor country because just three years after independence, there was a, a civil war. So therefore, people had to leave the country. And in Uganda itself, there are 1.2 million refugees from South Sudan. 1.2. They are divided in five regions, settlements. And the SPDs are taking care of the refugees living in a settlement called Bidi Bidi, with 270,000 refugees. 270,000. 70% of them are children and youth, young people. The main challenge there is how to provide good education for these children and youth. The UN provides everything for the accommodation, for also for the education at the elementary uh, level, but for the secondary level it's very difficult. Our conference along with the sisters, they help the children, financing them to do some schools outside of the settlement. Surely, only very few we can support. Only around 100 students we can support. But that is the concrete action. Preaching, praying is important, but also concrete actions are important. And that is the mission of the church. That is the mission of our congregation. That is the mission of all of us. To pray, but also to take concrete actions. My dear brothers and sisters, 
I want to thank you for your support to, to my conference, to, my, to the members of the society here in this parish, Father Justin and Father Charles. The missionaries can do nothing without the support of the congregation, without the support of the parishioners. Thank you for your support. And also for Father Andreas, he is in the Holy Name Parish at present. But I also want to ask you to continue supporting us, supporting our six members of the congregation working in 82 countries. Many of these countries are difficult countries because of political, economical situation. Your support in form of prayers is very, very important. Also, pray for the vocations. There are more and more young people ready to respond to the call of God to do ministries in the church. Also, by to be religious missionaries. The world is in dire need of Christians. The world is in dire need of missionaries. So please, support us and pray for us. Pray for the missionaries. Pray for the vocations. Thank you.